My name is Rob Stokes. I'm the founder of Quirk. We're a digital marketing agency based in uh, Africa. And J.W. Thompson recently bought Quirk. What was their motivation for buying the company? Well, I think their motivation for buying the company was the fact that uh, Africa represents a big growth opportunity. Um, they've still got, uh, it's challenging growth, but they've still got some growth ahead. And digital represents a growth opportunity. I'd like to think that Venn diagram looked quite uh, appetizing when it came to Quirk. We, we're one of the biggest digital agencies on the continent. And um, yeah, it's, it's forming a... What proportion a, of your turnover is in South Africa and in the rest of Africa? Probably. Still dominant in, in South Africa. Probably about 75% of our revenue uh, is in South Africa. Okay. And what sort of different types of clients have you got? Really across the spectrum, from mobile operators, um, we've got uh, FMCG, uh, alcohol clients, um, financial services, quite a lot of financial services actually, uh, tourism, uh, really across the, across the spectrum. And what's the relationship between traditional media in Africa and the more social media, the digital advertising? What, what, how do those two fit together, both in the mind of the user and for an agency like yourself? It's an interesting question. I think what makes South Africa and indeed the whole continent quite unique is uh, inequality. Not a good thing. Um, but also the usage of media is, is very different uh, between, if I can say, the top and the bottom of the pyramid. Mm. Um, e look, m digital and, and particularly from a mobile sense is, is everywhere, um, but the way people use it is very different. So in, in your, your, your mass base of users, they've all got mobile phones, but very limited users, uh, very limited usage. Uh, they basically well, mainly feature phones. Uh, mm. They're generally prepaid. They don't have a lot of data, and they're not using many apps. Whereas at the top end of the market, it's almost as you'd expect anywhere else in the in the developed world. Um, what I do find, though, is that I like to look at, at an advertising opportunity or a marketing communications opportunity as a factor of where are the customer's eyeballs, where is their attention, mm. and their attention. I couldn't give you an exact figure, is, is dominating towards some sort of digital device. Mm. The marketing spend is not. And therein, I think, lies a challenge and an opportunity, depending on which side of the fence you sit. So television and print, for example, still dominates from a spend perspective. And yet most people have gravitated towards a mobile, mobile device for entertainment purposes. They're still watching TV. They're still reading a few newspapers, but, but they're not... For they brands were. and agencies, why is that? Because if you look at the um, newspapers in particular, the, the number of people actually reading those, even if you believe the exaggerated figures, are, are, are quite small alongside those engaging in, in internet versions of the same. Look, I think it's, it's playing it safe. It's doing what we've always done. But as Henry Ford said, if you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always got. And that is a challenge that we face. We find our best clients are the ones that are prepared to experiment. They're very um, ROI and, and measurement driven. So they test something out on digital. They see if it works. If it does, they assign more budget. And, you know, they're not just going to jump from one thing to the other. They've got businesses and brands to protect. But they're taking a very innovative and, and proactive approach. Whereas, frankly, the majority of marketers on the continent are there to play it safe first. Uh, and I think marketing in the 21st century, you're unlikely to be successful by playing it safe. It's just too much out there. And what's the relationship within the agency? I mean, presumably as <coughs> part of JWT, you know, they do a lot of the traditional advertising side of the piece and you do the digital piece, but how does that fit together? Who drives that? Look, we collaborate on a lot of clients yeah. um, because I think we know what we're best at, but at the same time, um, we compete actually in certain respects as well. Um, Quirk just got our first can shortlist and it was for a TV ad, uh, which I don't think even we expected, but it was a good ad. Mm. Um, JWT on the, on, the, on the flip side are doing some good digital work. When it gets very technical or, or nitty gritty, uh, they will pass it to us. And you know, high volume, uh, point of sale, re sale retail clients, uh, we would pass on to them because you know, those represent the, the challenging parts of those two pieces. Um, but slowly but surely, it's inevitable we will come together. I, I don't believe digital agencies will exist in the next 10 years. That doesn't make sense to me. There are not, not many TV agencies. To the, to the mainstream spending. Yeah, just, you know, digital is, is not a, I mean, I know this is a bit of a cliche, but it's not a channel, it's a thing that kind of mm. connects everything together. So if it doesn't make sense to separate it out to me, it makes sense to separate out skills when there's a skills shortage. 
and that's I think what has happened. Um, and there's an understanding gap, but it's quickly being filled. And you know, when I come to London and spend time here, it's a it's a window on what I think the top end of our market will look like in the next 18 months and that convergence is very obviously happening. And in five years time in Africa what, what will digital be like? What will be different do you think? The difference between a, a feature phone and a smartphone is astounding and, and I think most of the developed world, I, I speak to my colleagues in London, they've forgotten uh, what it's like to have a feature phone. It's fundamentally different. Mm. That that is going to change in the next five years. We're going to go from a minority on smartphones to a majority. And when you make that change, your, your interaction and your relationship with that device changes forever. Um, it, it goes from being a, a kind of a functional utility to an integrated part of your existence. And for marketers, that just represents a huge amount of opportunity. Um, and, and also for businesses, you know, if you look at someone like Uber, uh, at the moment, and they, they are growing through South Africa like wildfire, mm. causing strikes all over the place, um, as you'd expect. But, you know, their, their target market is actually very small because not many people have an app on their phone. But mm. we do have a transportation problem. Our public transport is very weak across the continent. Mm. Um, and I think that as, 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 the, as the app ecosystem goes down uh, and, and, and embraces more people, um, and they start using these things, they're going to change. And I think we're going to see very innovative solutions. So I actually don't think Uber, in, in your traditional sense as you'd see it in Europe, uh, is going to grow massively. But I think ride sharing and things like that, it, it's just more, more affordable. Mm. Um, the moment it's just, you don't have a GPS on your phone, so therefore it's not possible to do that uh, within the next year or two, that'll be there. But beyond smartphones, what, what other changes do you think? Look, the, the move towards spend in digital is growing. It's growing slowly, but I, I, I feel like there's a tipping point along the way. Um, there's been rumours for about seven years of a move to digital TV, which will also change things quite a lot. Uh, it, it makes TV a bit more, you can reinvigorate it for marketers, mm. if you will. Um, but it's difficult to say Africa is quite slow at adopting things at times that really was supposed to be rolled out a long time ago. It's going to be interesting to see how those things change uh, the world, uh, but it's also very difficult to predict. For example, mobile payments in Kenya have exploded. They've been tried in South Africa numerous times and mm. have never ever succeeded. And I can't wrap my head around that mm. because it's such an obviously useful mechanism. Why hasn't it succeeded? I, I can't answer that question. Behaviour change, isn't it? it? It is, but why was that behaviour change in Kenya so quick and simple? And and I mean, literally every bank in South Africa has tried it. We've rolled out in Pesa in mm. South Africa, and, and it's come out in the last couple of weeks. It's been an abysmal failure, but we have exactly the same needs.